are affected. Well, this passage today, when it says pass by, it's not talking about the President of the United States. It's talking about the Lord God Almighty. The Lord God Almighty passes through your disaster area to bring you words of comfort and to bring you the promise of relief and everlasting life. So today, as you experience that earth-shaking news, as you have gone through and been knocked down by those whirlwinds of crisis in your family, as you have exchanged those fiery words, this passage is reassuring you that God is with you today to give you words of comfort and also to provide you with aid and relief. The Lord God passes by. Now, in our reading today, we have Elijah there. After, after the earth, wind, and fire, experiencing God passing by. But I would like for us to, for a moment, consider what his experience would have been like up to that moment as he was cowering in that cave, you know, at Mount Horeb, right? As all of these events were passing by the front of that cave. I'd like for us to look again at the passage and, and consider what that would have been like and what that would have sounded like. Looking again at verse 11, it continues. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. Could you understand what God was saying to you through those sounds of earth, wind, and fire? Well, I certainly couldn't because I don't speak earth, wind, and fire. See, what I want us to all to understand is that we cannot understand what God is saying in our disaster because God is not in the earth, wind, and the fire. He speaks to us through other means. So let's be clear that as earth, wind, and fire pass by the prophet Elijah, God is not in that. God speaks to us through other ways. As you today are experiencing your own personal earth, wind, and fire in your daily life, God is not talking to you through that. But Satan certainly is. What we need to consider today is that Satan does like to speak through natural disasters. Satan likes to speak through earth, wind, and fire, just as he did in the book of Job. In the book of Job, it said, fire came down from heaven and burned up all of Job's sheep and his servants as well. In the same book, Satan brought on this wind from the desert that hit the house and killed Job's sons and daughters. So it is established today that the devil likes to talk through these natural disasters. And what is, we hear, what is that we hear these disasters telling us? Death, destruction, curses, doubt. The devil does all this so that you would turn to God and curse him to his face. The devil speaks to us through earth, wind, and fire. The devil wants to crush our faith. The devil wants to discourage us, makes us think that God is talking when really he's talking, accusing us, making us feel guilty and ashamed, making us feel like, yeah, this all fell upon us because of something we did. 
But God speaks to us in a different way. He speaks to us in words that we can understand, in a way that we can appreciate. God, the Lord, passes through, and he brings us those words of comfort. He brings us those words of assurance. Today, you may have come here to escape those noises of the devil out there, the earth, wind, and the fire. Someone I know very well here often calls this her safe place. Well, as you've come to this safe place, this presence of God, as he passes through, he is bringing you those words of assurance. He's reassuring, reassuring you that he is going to give you relief and everlasting life. The Lord God, when you're in his presence, he passes by. He passes by that you might have peace and reassurance. Earth, wind, and fire, then, is what a believer heard September 1st, 1923, in Yokohama, Japan. Her name was Gertrude Korzad. She was 58 years old, and she was visiting Yokohama at the time. And on that particular day, a hundred years ago to this month, she heard earth, wind, and fire. Earth. A 7.9 magnitude earthquake shook the Kanto area where she was. Wind. At the same time, a typhoon with 60 mile per hour winds were blowing gusts into this area. Fire. Because of the wind, fires that had started because of lit hearts in the, in the houses being jostled by the quake caused flames to go from structure to structure, and a fire broke out all throughout Yokohama and Tokyo. This is the place where Gertrude found herself. Running among panic-stricken people, a crowd, the masses, running towards higher ground to escape these raging flames of fire, driven by these typhoon winds. And as she was running, people around her were weak and feeble, were being pushed down, trampled over, and in some cases abandoned and left for the flames to completely swallow them up. This was going to be Gertrude's fate, fate as she approached this steep hill that she was too tired to climb. Today, you might feel like Gertrude. You're tired. You're exhausted. You're worn out from all of these events that you have been experiencing from the earth, wind, and the fire, from the challenges that you have in life. But the promise that we have today is God, our Lord, passes by. He sees you in distress. He hears you calling for mercy. And he brings you his presence and that word and that relief and that reassurance. Our Lord God absolutely passes by. God in passing by then, it's, he's different from the other things that we hear in this world. God in passing by for us Today, he is making a distinction between himself and the earth, wind, and the fire. The creator is making a distinction between himself and the creation. The savior is making a distinction between himself and death. Indeed, throughout history, God has spoken to his people through trembling mountains, through storms, and also through burning bushes. We believe in natural revelation, that God, through the order and the awe and the wonder of nature, speaks to us and declares that he is our God and our creator. But the author, the writer of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 2, says, In these last days, God has spoken to us through his Son. God speaks to us through his son in a human voice. God speaks to us through his son in an intelligible voice. God speaks to us through his son in a compassionate and empathetic voice. 
This is what we read in our passage today, that God spoke to Elijah there in the cave as he was frightened and terrified in a gentle whisper. The passage says this, after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. He knew that that was God. Not the earth, not the wind, not the fire, but this voice, this gentle, compassionate voice that comes after the disaster, that comes to bring us the comfort. That is the Son of God. Isaiah chapter 40 prophesies about this Son, this Messiah, when he says these words. He says to us, comfort, comfort, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service had been completed and that her sins had been paid for and that, the Lo and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. That is what our Lord wants us to hear today. That your sins have been paid for. That he has come to save you and deliver you. He speaks to you in a gentle voice because that's the voice you will listen to. You all know it. Matthew chapter 10, excuse me, John chapter 10. Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. They will not listen to the voice of a stranger. They're not listening to earth, wind, and fire. They listen to my voice and I save them. No one can snatch them out of my hand. I call them by name. Jesus speaks to us and he leads us from disaster. It was a, a gentle voice like this then that actually helped Gertrude on that September 1st day in 1923. As she was running among the masses, fleeing from the flames, she came across a 20-year-old man who was by himself, and so she asked him, are you alone? And he said, yes. Well, perhaps you can stay with me. And he did. Um, through this ordeal, he was there with her. This young, quiet man was with her as she tried to climb this hill. He was an encouraging voice for her. He led her from the place of the fire to higher ground. And still as fire went up that hill, yet to another hill, he continued to lead her. And that is what the voice, that gentle voice of Jesus does for us. He leads us from the fire, the fires of hell. He leads us from all of the destruction and the pain. He leads us to life everlasting. For church, that's the first coming. That's the gentle whisper. But the second coming it's going to be a loud command, a loud command from heaven, the voice of an archangel calling us, calling us from the grave and calling us to everlasting life. It's going to be a loud command. The earth will be shaken and a roaring fire will consume all the elements, but it will not harm you because God is calling you to heaven to be with him forever. God, in the second coming, will speak to us in a loud command, a loud command that gives us everlasting life, a loud command that brings us to the mouth of the cave, to the tomb, a loud command that gives us everlasting life. The Lord speaks to us through the voice of his Son. The devil speaks to us through disaster, through the earth, wind, and the fire. But God speaks to us through a living being, through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. God continues to speak through the body of Christ. God is in the bread and the wine. The body and blood are in and with the bread and line, wine to give us the forgiveness of sins and the reassurance and the comfort that we have everlasting life. And amen. God is in every single one of you. And when God speaks through you, it's, it can be a gentle whisper, a word of encouragement, a prayer, sometimes moans and groans that we, can only, we can't even interpret, but the Holy Spirit does. But it can also be a loud voice 
When the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles on Pentecost, it was a loud sound. It says that a rushing wind, listen, a rushing wind came in. And then these men went out in the street with tongues of fire over their head, and they proclaimed Christ to the people, and 3,000 came to faith that day. God speaks through living beings. He speaks through you and me. He speaks through our voices as whispers and as loud voices of proclamation of our Savior in this world. God passes by, but he passes by in each one of us. We are that grand and massive parade moving through the city. When people see us, they see this walking party, this celebration of a Jesus who loves us. They see the way to salvation. We become a part of that, that parade that moves through the city. When Jesus healed the blind man, what happened after that? What did he do? It says he followed him. We follow Jesus as he passes through the world, sharing this wor word of salvation, this word of comfort to those who are hurting. We speak over the sound of the earth, the sound of the wind and the fire. We speak this word of promise of everlasting life that we have through Christ our Lord. Gertrude heard the voice. She heard the roar of the fire, the rumble of the earthquake, the roaring of the wind. But she also heard the voice of this young man who was leading her to her salvation. He eventually brought her to the highest point of the city, and it's from there the two of them, with others who were saved, looked down and saw all of the massive destruction, the fire burning the entire city, would appear to be the entire world. So it will appear for us as we are brought to the high place by our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see a world that's being shaken, a world that's being burned, the rage and the fury and the wrath of God blown over it. But because of Christ and that gentle voice, we will have our salvation. We will have everlasting life. The Lord passes through. He passes through in the form of the body of Christ, people like you and me, sharing his word and promise to those who are in need. So as I thought about earth, wind, and fire, as I was reading it in 1 Kings, I kind of wondered if the band got their name from that event. But unfortunately, no, it was the astrological sign of the guitarist and also the founder of the band. But we have this reassurance today that even when there is earth, wind, and fire, it's not a star or anything like that that we believe in. We believe in God, the Father, who made all the stars, who made heaven and earth, and who made every single one of us in his image and passes through to save us. When we say pass by, maybe it gives us a sense that God just sort of keeps going and, 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 and forgets about us. But I think it's actually very fitting and appropriate because we're not staying here, folks. He's taken us with him. He's not going to leave us here. So he's passing by to, to bring us with him so that we may be where he is forever. So know today this, that the devil may want to speak to you through earth, wind, and fire. He may want to speak words to you that cause you to curse God and to doubt and to, to fear death. But God is speaking to you with a different voice. He's speaking to you through his son. He's speaking to you with a human voice that you can understand and hear, a human voice that calls you by name. He's proclaiming aloud to you, this is the way to salvation and everlasting life. And he speaks to us with a people, people of faith in our lives, who reassure us and comfort us in our times of disaster and struggle. You, folks, are God's earth, wind, and fire. You rattle this place. You blow things down. You burn through the things in the world that are evil. And you bring life with you and Christ with you. So today, I invite you all to remember. Remember the little voice. Speak that voice to those in your life. Speak that voice to those who are suffering. Reassure them that God is with us, that he has passed by, and that with him, as we follow him, we have everlasting life. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding,
keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.